Thank you, Cassie. It's so good to have you home and all of our other college students. Christmas and music are synonymous. At this time of year, the whole world seems filled with music. We have been looking at the very first Christmas carols. We looked at Zechariah as he did the Benedictus when his voice was given back to him before his, when his son John the Baptist was born. He sang out in a great praise to God. We looked at the Magnificat, that first carol that was really sang by Mary to her cousin Elizabeth, but even more to Jesus who was still in her womb. And today we look at the Gloria, when the angels break forth in all of heaven and music fills the earth. This is the original carol that inspired the carol Heart the Herald Angels Sing. It's one of our favorite carols. It was written by Charles Wesley. You probably know about Charles and his brother John. They founded the Methodist Church in the 18th century. And, and John was a prolific preacher and an organizer and, and was very good at all this. But his brother Charles was the one who liked to write hymns. Charles Wesley wrote 8,989 hymns in his life. Every time they got together in the Methodist church early on, Charles would just write a new hymn. And the people came to, to hear the hymns. You, you know many of these. And can it be, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, love divine, all loves excelling. Christ the Lord is risen today. Rejoice, the Lord is king. Those are some pretty good hymns, aren't they? And then he wrote for Christmas, Hark the herald angels sing. It is based on the Gloria, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom God's favor rests. Uh, Charles wanted to capture what the angels were saying so, so that we could sing like the angels did. And he chose those words very carefully, for he was a linguist as well as a theologian. He wanted things to be just right. But Charles had a friend whose name was George Whitfield. You probably have heard of George Whitfield. He was a famous evangelist. He was a little bit like Billy Graham and Joel Olstein rolled together. Can you imagine? In the 18th century, they came out in droves to hear Whitfield preach. And Whitfield and the Wesleys were friends. And when they were singing Heart and Herald, angels sing Whitfield decided that the words were a little bit difficult so he just switched them up Charles wasn't real happy with this but but the new words stuck originally when when Charles Wesley wrote down heart the herald angels sing he actually wrote hark how the welkin rings why, why did Whitfield change that because even in those days no one knew what a welkin was I mean, do you know what the welcome singing is? The welcome is the sphere, is an old English for the sky where the stars and the moon and the sun live, where in creation God speaks forth and separates the firmament from the sky and he places the lights in the heavens. Uh, that is the welcome. And, and you've heard of this. And, and the welcomes are these spheres that ring out in praise to God as in the music of the spheres. You know that one from This Is My Father's World. You see, what Charles wanted was to capture not just that the angels sang, but all of glory, all of creation, all of the stars and the moon, everything shouted forth praise to God. It was not just this one solo, and by the way, his name was not Hark. Although there have been several children's musicals written with an angel named Hart. Uh, that one angel did have the solo to announce that Christ was born in Bethlehem. But then all of creation breaks forth into song. Because God is entering into the world. Something amazing is happening. Of course, we wouldn't know what a welcome was if we sang the original words. But Charles Wesley wanted you to know that it wasn't just the angels, it was everything singing. And they were singing, glory to the newborn king, 
No, those are the words that Whitfield changed it to. The original words that Charles Wesley wrote were glory to the king of kings. Do you see the difference? Again, Whitfield wanted to catch her uh, that this king was a newborn. He wanted to have this wonderful picture of Jesus in a manger. And it is a beautiful picture. And those words, glory to the newborn king, sound beautiful. Yet Charles Wesley said, glory to the king of kings in the original lyrics. His emphasis was not upon the birth, but upon who was being born. That this one in the manger may be a baby, but he is the king of kings. He is the Christ. The one who has been promised. The king that will rule forever. So Charles Wesley talked about this welcome, welcome ringing and talked about this baby who was now the king that would rule forever. For today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, Christ the Lord. When Jesus was born, Herod was considered the king. And Herod had another king over him whose name was Caesar, who claimed to be God. They ruled with a heavy hand. They controlled others with military might. And yet, when God brought the king of kings, the one who would rule over all of creation, he came as a little child. When we follow Jesus, we can only follow, not only if we claim him as our savior, but as our Lord and as our King, the one who rules our lives. We have to make a decision when we sing this song and we talk about the King of Kings. What will really rule our lives? Will it be as the world lives? Will it be according to others and what they say? Or will we look at this baby who doesn't stay an infant, but grows and teaches us how to live and to love and says, this is the way of my kingdom. When Jesus began to preach, he said, I have come to proclaim the kingdom is at hand. God's rule, God's reign, that in our hearts we give our lives to Christ and we say, we will follow you. You are now our king. You will make the rules for us. And we will live differently. And then Wesley wrote, peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconcile. Whitfield didn't change that line. It was just too good. It captured what they both wanted captured. That this peace would come upon earth not like the rulers like the romans who were over most things that day who brought a peace but brought it with a heavy hand their idea of peace was you just stamp out anyone who doesn't agree with you and people still try to bring peace that way that only if you do exactly like i say can we be at peace with one another Jesus says, no, my peace is going to be a peace that comes in love. He could have chosen to sit on an earthly front throne, but instead he chooses to give his life upon a cross. That is the kind of king we have. The one who then brings peace to our lives by overcoming the sin that is in our lives. You see, Christ comes to bring peace to the entire world, but mainly between the world, we who are sinners, and God. God who is holy and just, and we who are sinners are reconciled. Not because of anything we have done or anything we can do, but because God says, I love them too much to let them go. And he comes in the form of Christ. 
to save us from our sins. Alexander Papadaris was a teacher of Greek culture. He was a politician, a philosopher, a very brilliant man. He founded a center for peacemaking on the island of Crete, where the Cretans and the Germans had fought tough battles during World War II, where he was a child during those years. There was a mass grave right beside where he sent, built his center for peace. When he talked about this whole concept of peacemaking after the Second World War, how to bring people who had been at, at war with each other, who had killed each other, how, how can we now come together? He told a story of when he was young. He found a piece of a mirror. It was off of a German motorcycle that had wrecked, and, and it was broken, but, but he took the largest piece, and he began to rub it on a rock that he, he might make it where it wouldn't cut himself, and, and he, he rubbed the edges down, and, and then he found that he could take that mirror, and he could point it at different objects, and, and the sun would catch the light, and, and he could flash that mirror around. At first it was just fun just to flash it on the side of buildings, those kind of things. But then he came up with a game. The game was, could he get the sun's light into the darkest crevices? He would go to caves and, and he would shine the light in the caves, or he, he would go by a house and underneath the house he would shine the light down under the house. Anywhere there was darkness, he played this game to shine light into the dark places. It was just a game when he was a child, but when he grew up, he said he began to realize that this was his life's calling, to shine the light, not of the sun, S-U-N, but of the sun, S-O-N, Jesus the Christ, into the darkness of the world to shine that holy light and to bring peace to those who walk in darkness. And then we hear the same hymn again. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. In the Gloria, the entire universe is singing and calling us to sing with them. The skies are singing in praise. I, I hope you are coming tonight to our Christmas cantata. It is beautiful. I, I came and heard the rehearsal Friday night. And my favorite part, I, I love all of the songs, but my favorite part is that a couple places, James is going to turn to you, and you're going to get to sing as well. And you're going to be ready to sing, because you're going to have heard the choir singing, and, and you're going to be wanting to sing because music calls forth song. The angels sing and call us to join the triumph of the skies. John and Charles Wesley are pretty famous folks. In their day, John was known much more, to be honest. But Charles is the one we know more today because he chose to take the words that came to him and to put them to song. St. Augustine said that singing and love are intimately connected. He said when we sing, our words of praise actually transform into love. Song opens our souls to the deepest of affections. When we sing, it changes us. There, there was a study of memory and those who were losing memory. Do you know one of the things that stays the longest? It is music. Researchers found that those who had forgotten most everything else, if you started playing like Amazing Grace, the words would still come. If you don't believe this, go with us sometime and sing at the nursing home with us. The words just flow out, and when we sing Christmas carols there, 
they join in the triumph of the skies. For Wesley says we are to join this host and sing, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Excuse me, those aren't the original words. That's what Whitfield again changed, something else that Wesley wrote. No, Wesley wrote, Christ is born today. It's a different emphasis. They're both in Scripture. The angel said, Christ is born today in the city of David of Bethlehem. And, and, and Whitfield wanted us to think about that Jesus was a part of the house and lineage of David. And Bethlehem was an important place. It was the city of David. But Wesley wrote, Christ is born today. That at the right moment in time, in the fullness of God's grace and glory, Christ came into this world. But that word today isn't just thousands of years ago. It is that Christ is born today. That Christ can be born in our hearts afresh and our new each and every day. It takes it out of the past. It takes it out of a particular place as glorious as Bethlehem is. And it places it in the center of our lives today. Today we come to Christmas. Will you allow the child to be born in you today?